is up. I am heading home from a meeting with a radio station which shall remain nameless, but is a very, very influential player in, uh, in their respective genre. So whether you are in Christian music, country music, rock music, pop music, I've got some takeaways for you that I think are going to be really helpful. Um, and basically what it was is we were sitting in on a music meeting so what they do is once every other week they will go through their list of oh, 15, 16 new songs that are being sent to them. Um, they're getting seven to eight new songs uploaded every single week to where they uh, are sent music. And so every two weeks they'll go through them and a lot of them they'll weed out because they just don't, they, they know their audience, they know their format, and they just don't fit. Then they, they will listen, and then the following week, they'll actually make their decisions on what are they going to add, how are they going to add it. And here was the surprising thing to me. The process is surprisingly scientific. I think a lot of us have this perception if we're artists or music makers or creators that, you know, uh, you know, radio stations or labels or gatekeepers are out of touch. They really don't know what people actually want. They're just guessing. What I found today was the exact opposite. And I, I think that's what I had expected because these are all very smart people. They're not um, dumb at their jobs. But they have a very, very detailed uh, scientific process of testing with their audience and this is not unique to them as a station so it's not like some big secret that I'm giving away this is how most big radio networks do it they, they have um, you know testing that happens very regularly by people who are in their audience and the testing is just fascinating how detailed it breaks everything down from did they like the song did they love the song did they dislike the song? Did they hate the song? Um, did they want you to play it less? Did they want you to play it more? Did they, uh, you know, are they, do they, are they are they just completely over it? Or are they are they passionate about it? There's a whole even a passion rating, which is which is fascinating. And then once you aggregate all that together, what you get is a pretty beautiful spreadsheet with you know how the songs are rating. What's the passion score? What's the familiarity score? That's another big thing is that songs that aren't familiar to people, which are just by nature newer songs, are going to test lower. So songs that people have heard before, feel like they're familiar with, um, they're going to just test higher. So that, that's a part of their decision making process. It's not just this song tested good, this song tested bad. They, they factor in all of these different uh, scores one being familiarity. So if so, if a song is less familiar and it scores low, they may not look at that low rating score because they know, oh well, well if you know if, if we give it a chance and people um, you know became more familiar with it, then maybe their ratings would increase. So that's how they kind of make some of their decisions. But um, after they put all that together, they they get their their heads together collectively and. You know, it's a combination of art and it's a combination of science. You can't always go off your gut and you can't always go off of the spreadsheets either. So they're doing their best job to make sure that at the end of the day, the number one goal is for them to serve their audience, their listeners, while expanding into new territories that their listeners currently aren't in. So their goals are actually very well um, aligned with labels and with artists. They want artists to sell their music. They want artists to get streamed on Spotify. Oh, that's another thing. They're actually paying attention to um, Amazon, Spotify, the, the streaming services as a part of that process as well. And then looking at what some of the other big um, competitor radio stations are doing in the market as well. So they're not just looking at this in a, in a vacuum of, uh, on you know the level of, okay, what's best for our station? The rest can just do their own thing. They're actually factoring all of those things into their decision-making process. And what I came away from that meeting with was this feeling of, man, we actually all want the same things. We're, we're all after hit songs, quote unquote, 
Um, we're all after stuff that people are going to resonate with. People, uh, we want people to say, "I want to play that song over and over and over again." We want them to love it, and ultimately, that's just going to drive consumption or drive people to come to your show. So, you know, rest assured, it's it's not that there's this big bad evil gatekeeper out there that's trying to keep your songs off the radio. It's just the reality is. They're adding in this, in this this particular station. I would say is probably on the higher end. They're, they're adding you know 45 songs a year maybe. And you think about how many they're getting sent. If they're getting sent you know eight uploaded to the server every week. Um, I mean you can you can just imagine how how hard of a decision making process that is. So when you release a song to radio and it doesn't get added, don't feel like it's because it's a bad song, it just might not work for their format. Um, there's songs that could be hits on streaming that are not hits for radio and, and vice versa. So um, you're an artist, you're making music, you're trying to get it played on radio. I know it's hard, it's frustrating. There's so few spots and so many people going after those same spots, but rest assured, um, these people I think are a pretty good representation of the collective radio industry they're trying to serve it serve the audience trying to play great music and they're fans of the music uh, themselves that's what you got to realize you know so some of these people are making a lot of money but a great majority of them are not they're just doing it because they're passionate they're doing it because they love music and that's what keeps them waking up every day and taking the calls from people and listening to songs and all of that good stuff so um, it was a very enlightening meeting for me, I don't know that it'll necessarily change the way we operate or anything, but sometimes just having the understanding of somebody else's thought process um, so you can operate from a place of empathy as opposed to a place of skepticism or cynicism, that can be all it takes. So, um, man, go write some great songs. At the end of the day, that, that was kind of what we left the meeting off with was just they were asking me, you know, being from a, a, a creative perspective of... Um, is it frustrating that everything's moving to singles and there's not as much of a space for some of these other songs? And I said, honestly, no. Um, my goal always has been and still will always be just to show up every day, just like I'm doing today. I'm getting ready to go into a session with a band called Skillet. And our goal is not to write a radio single. It's not to write a big streaming single. It's, it's to write a great song. And that's all it comes down to. So I'd encourage you guys to adopt that same mentality. If a song becomes a hit, so much of it's out of your control, you can't control how the audience responds to it. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week.